We spent quite a bit of time examining techniques and applications of statistical inference, or learning about a larger population based on a smaller sample from that population. One of the assumptions of the techniques that we discussed was that the population that we're analyzing has to be normally distributed, or that the sample that we're collecting is sufficiently large enough such that the central limit theorem kicks in and we can assume normality in the sampling distribution. The assumption was true for inferences about the means of one and two populations. It was true for proportions of one and two populations, where our analysis techniques were based on the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. And it was even true for our studies of variance from one and two populations, as the chi-square and f distributions both make the important assumption of normality in the underlying distribution of the random variable being measured. But sometimes we just can't assume normality. Maybe the sample size just isn't big enough for the central limit theorem to work. That could be because we simply can't collect a large enough sample, say because it's too expensive or too time consuming to sample. Or it could be because the population distribution is such that we'd have to collect a really large sample, bigger than the magic number of 30, to overcome the effects of non-normality in the population. Remember, the magic number of 30 is not the panacea for all non-normal populations. For example, the sample needs to be much larger for highly skewed population distributions. The confidence interval and hypothesis testing methods that we've talked about so far assume normality in the sampling distribution and are thus referred to as parametric methods. By parametric, we mean we know the precise form of the distribution for a statistical inference technique. For the fundamental techniques that we've discussed, parametric methods refer to the methods that require the normal distribution. There are others that are beyond the scope of this class. But you can imagine that somewhere, a statistician has developed a technique for calculating a confidence interval for, say, exponentially distributed data. That would still be a parametric technique because the technique assumes a particular distribution, an exponential distribution. What we're going to discuss in this unit are non-parametric methods, techniques of statistical inference that don't require any assumption that the population or the sampling distribution follow a particular distribution. Again, these techniques arise for particularly small sample sizes or when we definitely can't assume normality. A common example of the latter is in the use of Likert scale data, often collected from surveys whose responses range from, say, mm -hmm. 1 to 5, strongly disagree to strongly agree. These are ordinal data that definitely don't follow a normal distribution, because they're obviously discrete and qualitative in nature. We're going to bypass nonparametric confidence intervals and focus on nonparametric methods for testing hypotheses. They're pretty easy to use, and again, we can use these techniques in situations where parametric methods won't work. However, if we can make an assumption about a distribution, we should. Parametric tests are always stronger tests. That is, it's harder to reject the null hypothesis using nonparametric tests. We have to be especially convinced that the sample evidence is different from the hypothesized value when we use a nonparametric test. There are many nonparametric tests in the literature, and frankly, that's true of statistical tests in general. As I just mentioned a couple minutes ago, there are specific tests for everything that may or may not have gained traction in practice. It's always good to check the literature to see if particular statistical analysis techniques have been developed that are tailored to a specific question you're wanting to answer. However, in this unit, we'll hit a few of the popular techniques for dealing with hypotheses about means, or more specifically, medians, of one and two populations.